welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome to my channel my name is Melanie and I will be a seventh year second grade teacher in a major city in Pennsylvania and today we're doing a little DIY arts and craft project for my upcoming classroom setup so I was walking in the Dollar Tree seeing what I can find and I found this little wooden sign I thought it was so cute I need to take it with me so what I did was I brought it home and I transformed it into this little sign that I will hang outside of my classroom to let people know where we are if we're not in our room, especially student messengers. And so the sign already came like this, but you'll see in the future clips um, that it came in like the general ruler color looking wood coloring. And I stained it and I added um, my words, my designs with my Cricut machine, and I printed this out um, that I made on PowerPoint. I added some Velcro so that I can stick and change out the different places that we are. Now this is just temporary. I used this cafeteria sign and a clip art that I found on Google. But what I plan on doing when I get into my school is taking pictures of the different places that the students will go to throughout the year and using that for the pictures instead of clip art. So clip art is cute, but I think an actual picture of the cafeteria, an actual picture of the computer lab, an actual picture of the gym, I think those will be way more beneficial for not only my students, but maybe other students who uh, maybe have a hard time reading where we are, but they definitely recognize that picture. So if you are interested in making this Dollar Tree sign, so I got this cute sign from Dollar Tree in their little crafter square section and I have this stain that I'll link down below um, if I can find it that I believe I got off of Amazon and I've been using this stain for other projects um, especially wedding DIYs and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just stain both sides of this sign you should read the directions on the stain to see how long you should wait before you do multiple coats if that's what you want or before um, you're able to do stuff on it like when it should be fully dry just make sure you're reading both signs. I don't read the labels. I mean, I did before, but I didn't care. <laughs> and I didn't mind if I got a little stain on my fingertips. It literally didn't bother me. But if it bothers you, definitely make sure you um, that the sign is fully dry before you apply the stain. And I only did one coat because it's already pretty dark. I didn't need it to be darker than that. So here I opened up my PowerPoint. As you see, I already had my cafeteria sign, but I'm gonna show you how I made that sign. So I just take a shape, I take this square with the outline. You can adjust the width of that outline and change the color to whatever you want. I'm gonna type in one of the rooms that my kids can possibly be in, possibly a library. I'm gonna type that in. I used a fun font that I got for free off of, I believe 1001 fonts, I think it's called. So it's called Sandy Kids. Change the sizing, center it. And then I'm gonna go to Google. Oh, was that a word? Good, good, good. I don't know what I just said. But anyway, I'm gonna go on Google and find a library clip art. This is just a random one that I found. Um, I'm probably gonna take real pictures when I get into my school, but for the sake of this video, here's a clip art. And if you can see, they do have the sizing on the side as you adjust the big box. So keep that in mind because we're going to have to come back to that a little later. Then I select it all so that I can move everything at one time and duplicate it to do another area that my kids might be in, such as gym. This is how you make multiple ones on one page when you print it out so you don't have to print out one at a time. Doing the same thing going on Google, finding a picture of gym. And I noticed that this looks like the gym that us adults will go work in. So I had to click school to find like a gymnasium. And I clicked a random one. And to make it a little more fancy, I did click the 
picture styles just to give it that blending outline look. Just because, I don't know, it's more appealing to me. You can do whatever. Now I opened up my Cricut and what I did was I uploaded a picture of that wooden sign that I have. So I took a picture of the wooden sign after I finished staining it and I erased all the outside non-relevant things that it was leaning on, like the bag. So I just have the shape. I measured it and I knew that it was about eight inches across where I needed the title to be, like that very top. So that's why I stretched it out so that it's eight inches across. Now I'm gonna find a font that I like to write my title, where are we? It's gonna come out black, so I'm gonna change that color to white so I can get a better visual of what it's going to look like. And I actually don't like the Sandy Kids font for this one, so I'm gonna change the font again. And I actually ended up changing it again, I just don't remember what my actual font was. Now I'm using this square only so that I have a good um, sizing of what my clip art picture should be. So you see, I can change the sizing in my PowerPoint so I can keep in mind that square, what size it is, so that I can go back to PowerPoint and change that later. I got these free images of vines off of my Cricut um, because I have like the Cricut access that I pay for. Place that where I feel like it will look nice, move the extra away, and then I um, scrolled and selected all of it, made sure it was attached and welded so that it stays in that same position when I go to cut it out. Make sure you delete the picture of the wooden sign and the square before you go ahead and cut. And while I'm letting this cut, I am going to laminate that picture that I printed out of the cafeteria sign. Now that I have the laminated cafeteria sign, I can stick a Velcro dot on the back. I like to stick the soft side on the actual picture and the rough side, I attach it to that soft one and then center it so that I don't have to worry about the little dot being off centered. And if you're gonna have kids change out that sign, maybe invest in like the bigger Velcro squares so they have better aim. I'm gonna peel back the extra vinyl. I'm gonna use my transfer tape after I weave out the dots and the letters. Use my transfer tape and stick it on there really good so that it sticks to it when I peel it back up. You'll see in a minute. I started to cut out the middle part as well because I realized I didn't want it to go over the Velcro sign. Um, you don't have to as long as you put the Velcro on after you lay down your vinyl. And if I have to cut out a piece to make little minor adjustments, it's really no big deal. I press that vinyl down through the transfer tape onto the wood, make sure it sticks. And then I peel it back. And y'all, I do not know the technical name of these tools. I'm sorry. If you know, leave a comment down below. And then here we have it, the final product. It came out so nice. I love it. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you like this little DIY project, give it a big thumbs up down below. And tell me in the comments, how would you transform this sign? I was also thinking maybe on the back of the sign, writing like, shh, we're taking a test, or something like that, or please knock because we're working hard. Something cute, in case I wanted to double slide this thing. You let me know, what would you do? How would you transform this dollar sign? Don't forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe and hit that notification bell. You wanna be a part of this family. We are a family that is growing fast and I want you to be with us on our journey and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!